Nick is the winner. Good job, buddy. Five points for Nick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much held the harness down there, the same harness you're trying to take out. And I uh, took the oil cooler bracket off as well. I put the bolt right in there. Remember, let's not forget, I'll hold it out. We'll take pictures. Maybe unbolt the screw and take a picture of the screw right next to the hole. You need to get some. Do it. Do it. Take it. That's it. You put the thumb. Russell, you gotta do the training down there. Okay, two, three, four, five. Okay. That would be stupid. What's that? What are we gonna do? We're gonna take off five bolts, or we're gonna take off the belt of that. Five bolts each. Why? I'm glad about you. We're gonna do some of the two near men. Yeah, it's racing. Oh, he's down. He's round. We have to make it go down while he did good. What are we out there? Or wait, how about? I would wait to soak this up. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. So what am I doing? You're taking four. But that means I got to twerk to the cab walk and the exhaust side. So I'll just sit there for me. Oh, it's the exhaust side. Yeah, yeah, the only thing we do is sit the headers out. The exhaust side. Oh, look, you get this. Yeah, you get that. Come on, don't you pop that up. Yeah, here's what you do. This side flawed us a bit. That side came out pretty easy. Oh, wait. They can just add this. Let it pick out. At least it's good for me. Oh, no, it's not even a 10. Smaller? Smaller. I would say like an eight. I love how I started organized and I got screws everywhere. Yeah, this is it. So my mic didn't turn on on this portion of the video, but you can kind of see me hammering there on top of the intake valley plate. And basically we found that the bolts were changed out for Allen keys and the Allens were stripped as in someone had already messed with this part of the motor, which my understanding was the only thing that's ever been done to this car is heads and cam. So we're kind of coming into a revelation here at this point. You can see here up close, we are using a Torx bit to kind of jam in the Allen keys position to turn the bolts. It slowed us down a bit. We eventually got the cover off, which you can kind of see us prying here with still no audio. And here's where we kind of find that um, our cam, my cam might actually be scored um, and be no longer usable, and we find some more damage. This motor had failed it. Well, that's why I did some thing. Maybe in the front. No, they, they definitely took the air. It's probably too. They probably cleaned the motor out. And that's the, the metal is. So I don't know if they think we're saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. So like, you know, do you talk about that tight school? Huh? Yeah. You can see that the squats, like, how long you were on, on push it up. That was the means that little old thing. I feel like you maybe it's very little feeling. Maybe like fishing. You can look at the truck in You can do like fishing by your nail. I'll sit. I'll do it. Yeah. I didn't run my nail on this one. I put it out my thing. I don't know what I'm going to tell him just. You like, like it's not super like this. It's really. Oh, but like. You got to be right. Oh, but on the, on, the, on the grass side, not on the, the grass bottom side. Yeah. Not on the low. No, 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 on the low. I didn't feel anything. Look. Yo, what's this from? From under the car, into the car. I do a lot of Look at it. Yeah. It's good to do that. It's good. Very worried. It's good. It's good. Now what? The sides? Well, that's what you say? Let's bring this fancy. Oh, yeah. I said put it on the floor. Really? Oh, wait, you got tires off. Now we just want to tackle them? Yeah, we'll put that over here.
Are you nervous? Because I'm nervous. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, it's not your motor. I was just saying, about to be like, I'm about to make a name for myself. It's lifting a fucking car. Huh? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it just came loose. Oh, look what it cleared. Yeah, we're looking good. A few moments later. Oh, it's pulling the whole car up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <clears throat> well, we're going to need a, a block and a few other parts. What was that right now? I made that note on the screwdriver. Yeah, just the screwdriver came out. Oh. Try to put some pry bars, see if we can move it forward. Yeah, it's a little yeah, okay. like jelly, nothing crazy. Yeah. So no hammering it? Like, where do you want me to... This is here. No, but like I'm saying, like back here to try to jog it forward. Yeah, yeah. Let's get that line from out from the back, and I think I'm crimping that shit. Yeah. Yeah, we can't oh, get. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's not. It's not stopping you. Right? No, you got clearance back here. Yeah, you're good. You got to separate for your leak. Yeah, that's usually how I do shit. You have to separate it wherever it's on. So we had to go under it. Bad. What's the only way to get it forward? It's a little fun. Throw it on the quick set. That prime bow is, like I said, you could be getting forward and rolling up and know that you're a point on this way. So it's a way. But that kick it. Let's see. Drop. Go ahead. You got me. Hey. Which one's easier? In your cradle, what is it? Six bucks? Yeah. When you, you're not taking it off, you're just dropping. Those, those, they're like studs like this long. So you're you're going to take it yeah. off. Yeah. Off the The control arm's kind of still, yeah. So now it sounds easier to take the fucking steering rack out. No, but I mean, you don't do nothing with the steering rack off. Get the steering rack Yeah, but you, you pull it branches, that's fine, but you pop it out. Money is not. Yeah. And then you'll know, be able to move it on. Yeah, what? Like, man. Remember, it's going into the wheel, like, toward the wheel. Mm -hmm. Like I say, once we take this out, we'll have that one. No, but I'm saying, you're not going to be able to take the rack off. Without take low in the suffering, you can loosen it, but you can't take it all the way. Okay. You sure, brother? That's what they do. It's either they you lower the subframe or you take out the crack. So what's the rack? The tie rods and the bolts in the center? More. I mean, we can tool bus do it from each side. That's what me and Adam are doing. I mean, you want me to go down there on this side and try to reach? Yeah. All right, just give me a long pry bar. I'm going to interject here because I'm not going to force you to watch three hours of us back and forth trying to figure out how to get the motor out. Everything started really, really good uh, in this. We started about noon that day and about 2 p.m. I remember getting a text message from one of my buddies asking if the motor was out yet. And I had mentioned to him that we were just about to pull the motor out of the car. That's how confident I was at 2 p.m. because we were just cruising through all of the other stuff to clear and make room for the motor to come out. Motor mounts were disconnected. Everything was disconnected. Um, we, when we, I did reviews on how to remove this motor, just some forum research on YouTube. There's not a whole lot on YouTube, but there is definitely some on the forums. There's basically two key methods that I saw everyone doing that were pulling the motor from the top. Method number one, which is the most common method, which was disconnecting the steering rack um, to allow yourself the room and space you're going to need to pull the motor forward in its position and then lift up so it can disconnect itself from the input shaft of the torque tube. The second option to keep the steering rack in there is to lower the subframe on the bolts the max you can to give you that one to two inch clearance you're going to need for that harmonic balancer to clear when you push forward. Now, Two little issues that I ran into. One, I don't have a factory harmonic balancer. I am running the ATI Super Damper, which is a much larger interface to work around. And two, uh, we were not factoring in that we already had started to pull the motor in an upward position, creating tension on the input shaft. So naturally, when the car is all together, they're both aligned. The input shaft's going right into the clutch and flywheel into the back of the motor and the motor's sitting there at a very level condition. 
since when we initially re released the motor mounts and hooked up the chains, the motor started to move freely. We figured we just had to do a little bit of left and right convincing and it would disconnect and separate itself. We put ourselves in a conundrum because we were using the quick jacks, which uh, did not allow space for anyone to successfully get under the car from the side of the vehicles. And then we had the engine sand in the front of the vehicle, so it didn't really allow us to safely get under the vehicle to really analyze the situation. So my recommendation is if you do have the quick jacks, probably go the old school route. Some jacks and some jack sand so you still have the freedom to get under the car and actually visualize what's going on. Fast forward, it took us a couple of hours to kind of figure out what we ended up coming to the uh, conclusion of was we did lower the subframe and we actually did loosen the steering rack um, a little bit, but only just to give us about a quarter of an inch. We actually took the front off which we probably didn't need to, but we took the front off of the super dampener to give us a bit more clearance. But again, we probably didn't need to because then we finally came to the revelation. We've had the motor continuously tugging and tugging and tugging in the upward position, creating this uh, more friction for the input shaft to release itself from the motor because the motor was at a diagonal position while the torque tube was actually at a slant because we had disconnected the torque tube interface from the body of the motor. Um, we finally got our way under the car, placed the jack under the torque tube, and that's when we finally figured out what we needed to do. We jacked up the torque tube, we lowered the motor back into the factory position, and started to work side to side a little bit to kind of convince it to slide forward. And as soon as they felt in proper alignment, we immediately saw the change in behavior where the motor disconnected itself and where we were successful. this far i appreciate you guys make sure you like subscribe comment share the video over the next coming weeks in about two weeks i'll take this motor over to a machine shop and engine builder where we'll hopefully schedule some time to take it apart and assess it i do plan to bring a video to you for that in just identifying what's been causing the lack of oil pressure what's been causing the oil to be consumed and finally get to know this motor in and out so when we rebuild this thing we will know without a shadow of a doubt that this thing is ready to hurt some feelings. On the quick side, we can expect this motor to probably be back within a month and a half. On the longer side, more realistic side, it could be anywhere between two to three months before I get an opportunity to put this motor back in the car. I'm not too concerned with it. In the meantime of that, I'll address some concerns on the car, potentially get uh, some new race seats in it, address some stuff in the engine bay that I can do while the motor's out, which is you know, re-wrapping all the wires and electrical harnesses from the, the brittleness and the heat that they've experienced, improving that, uh, and upgrading engine mounts and more things. So make sure you uh, are hitting that bell notification icon for whenever I drop a video because more stuff will be coming even while the motor is out. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for following along. Peace.